I'm Sean Paul, joined by Stadium Insider Jeff Goodman and the man of the hour, Utah Valley transfer, Fardaz Amak, who is going to make his announcement today. He is a two-time Defensive Conference Player of the Year in the WAC. He won WAC Player of the Year in 2020-2021. And today's decision day, Fardaz, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for having me on. No problem. So first, for those who, who, who weren't huge WAC uh, basketball fans and haven't you know, seen you play a ton, describe your game for those who haven't seen you. Yeah, well, I mean, if someone were to ask me, uh, you know, what kind of player I am, I'd say, you know, I'm, I'm a 6'11", versatile uh, player that can kind of do a little bit of everything. I can shoot the ball, I can dribble, I can pass, um, I can defend. Um, you know, I can bring a lot to the table, and I think that's, that's something that's kind of unique about myself. And this is your third time around be, being recruited. You came out of high school, went to Mercer, transferred from Mercer to Utah Valley, sat sure. out here, and now you're at Utah Valley transferring again. So what was this process like for you? You know, the first time I transferred out, um, I didn't have a lot of schools. Um, you know, it was it was more of trying to figure out, okay, where is, you know, the best fit? Where am I going to develop and where am I going to play? Uh, but this time around, you know, within the first 24 hours, I probably had every school in the country and I had to, you know, bring that list down pretty quick. So obviously, you know, that um, I don't take that for granted. You know, that's something that, you know, obviously means a lot, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that uh, I'm truly grateful for. All right. So let, let's get to it. Uh, the finalists, Texas Tech, uh, who you visited, Washington, you visited. Uh, Texas Tech, uh, Texas, you didn't get a chance to go down to Austin, uh, but those are the three finalists. Uh, let, let's get to it here. Who are you picking? And uh, I, I'm going to be a Red Raider next year, man. Let's go. Guns up. There you go. <laughs> Red Raider Nation, you got yes, your sir. guy. You guys have been tweeting at him endlessly over the past number of weeks, and you got him. Yesterday, you got Davion Harmon. What was it about Texas Tech? You visited there. What sold you on the Red Raiders? You know, for me personally, um, it was Mark Adams. He, uh, you know, the, the moment I talked to him, he was somebody who I was really intrigued by. Um, I truly believe in his philosophy, especially on defense. Um, he's somebody that truly believes, you know, that he, he can turn me into a lottery pick. And, and um, a lot of the things that he does, you know, especially on the defensive side of things, um, can really improve my stock. And, you know, with the guys they have coming in, we have a chance to be, you know, a top 10, top five team and, and really make a run in the tournament. So, you know, that that's super exciting. Obviously, Big 12, you know, the best conference, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm super excited to be a Raider. So how much did NIL play into this whole process and yeah. trying to figure out where to go? Obviously, we've heard so much about it right now. Um you know, that it, that it could be a deciding factor in a lot of guys' decisions. How much was it for you? You know, for me, um, it obviously played a part, but, you know, it, it wasn't the sole thing. Um, you know, once I figured it out, okay, this is how much, you know, I could potentially make, I solely made my decision, you know, from the basketball, you know, point of view. And, you know, I looked at fit. I looked at playing style. I looked at, you know, rotation guys who I'll play with. And then I made my decision from there. So, for me, you know, obviously there was other schools where, you know, Fit might not be as good. You might get a little bit more money, but is that worth a long run? So, you know, for, for me, that's that's where I came from my decision. What did you hear about your role for Mark Adams? What what are you expecting your role to look like, and what do you tell you about that? You know, for me, um, just talking to him over the past couple of weeks, he sees me as, you know, the centerpiece, um, a guy that can come in and be an impact transfer right away, um, somebody who's obviously going to be a vet, uh, be a leader on the team and do whatever it's going to take to help the team win. So I'm super excited to, you know, uh, join him and his staff and, and the guys and, and make a run at this thing. So I'll tell you what, I, I've been down there a couple times uh, to Lubbock in the last yeah. couple of years. You know, I was down there for that Texas, Texas oh, Tech yeah, game yeah, yeah. this past year. <laughs> not a better environment I've ever seen. And I'm not even talking, like, inside the arena, I think a lot of people kind of saw it because they were paying attention. Uh, to, to what was going on there with the former coach, Chris Beard, coming back. I would yeah. say this, and this happened a couple of years ago when I went for the Kentucky game too. Outside of the arena, those fans and their hunger and their ability to have fun and, and party, um, and, and the good thing is it's, you know, 70 degrees, 75 degrees out every day during yeah. the season. 
you got beer trucks, you got food trucks, you got music, you got big screens, nothing. I've never seen anything like it. So how excited are you to play? I mean, again, you've been at Utah Valley. It, it is yeah. not Texas tech in terms no, of the no. fan base. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's one thing that definitely excites me. You know, I, I'm, uh, I take a lot of pride in, in playing for, you know, whatever's on the front of my uniform. So for me, you know, going to Texas Tech, I'm going to, you know, represent the fan base, you know, in a very respectful way. You know, I'm going to play my heart out every single night and, and I'm going to put it all on the line. And, and um, I'm going to do that every single night, you know, not just for the fans, but for the coaches, my teammates um, and for the university. So I, I'm super excited um, to get out there and, and put on a show. So I did want to ask you about this. So you are an early entrant into the NBA draft also, and now you're committed to Texas Tech. What's your yeah. thought process going into the draft decision, and uh, what would you say the odds are that you end up coming back to college next year? You know, as of right now, um, it's a 50-50 decision, obviously, um, with workouts coming up next week and starting those. I'll be working out for teams and, and um, you know, going through the whole combine stuff and everything. It, it will truly depend on, okay, if I'm at a place where, you know, I think it's worth it for me to leave, then obviously I would take that route. Um, but if it's not, I'll come back to school for another year, improve my stock, you know, make a run at the tournament and, and um, you know, leave a legacy at Texas Tech. Is there a certain like draft range you're looking at, you're kind of pointing to at all? I mean, as of right now, it's, you know, it's, it's all up in the air. Uh, I don't have a certain number, but uh, you know, once, you know, once we get the feedback and hear from GMs and teams, okay, this is what we have you at, you know, are you a two-way guy, are you this, this and that, then then we'll see, um, you know, sit down with my people, my agent, my family, and figure all that out. Thanks, everybody, for coming out here. I'm Sean Paul, joined by Jeff Goodman, and thanks again to Fardaz Amac, the newest Texas Tech Red Raider, for coming on today's show and announcing his commitment. Have a good one. Yes, sir. Congrats, Fardaz. I appreciate it, bro. Thank y'all.